Hey guys, Dream Envoy here, and welcome back to more of Let's Play Winds of Change. Last time, Sylvie has permanently joined our party, and this means we only have a few days left before we attack Balteus, now that we have access to the world map. Since we only have a few days left, this is a good time as any to do, well, last loyalty scenes and I just want to wonder is there one for okay we have to go to a previous area for um house okay so I won't be doing that then I guess my loyalty scenes are always gonna be Valesa, Fortem, and Domic. I think I'm gonna do it in the order that I was able to obtain them, which I believe that I got in um, Fortem's loyalty first. Let's do this. Oh yeah, because he wanted to climb the Grand Tree, that's right. Fortem takes me back to Valinorth and we look at the Grand Tree. It makes sense that he wanted to accomplish his lifelong dream before the final battle. With those metallic claws he found in Mazeo, I think he could finally achieve what he wanted. And of course he wanted me to achieve it with him. I'm grateful that he chose me, but I'm also a little worried. Is this really something I could pull off, even with those tools? Well, I guess this is it. I can't leave for Balteus with any regrets. So I'm finally going to do it. I'll climb the Grand Tree. And with someone like you, no less. I think they'll talk about this in the history books? I mean, I don't think anybody else has done this before. We're going to be the first. Here, you need to put these on like gloves. There's another pair that goes on your feet as well. After that, we just climb. We don't need to find footholds. Being able to create them ourselves? Now that's a good invention. I gotta give credit where credit is due. The Zayans know what they're doing. Don't tell anybody though. These might very well be under the trade ban. He gives me a quick wink. It's alright though. I won't tell anybody. Not that there is anyone I could get in trouble with because I'm the highest authority now, but okay. It looks way taller than I remember. I'd try to give you some advice, but I don't have any. With those tools, this should be pretty easy. At least, I hope. Let's hope we don't get seriously injured right before the final battle. Just. Don't fall, Monarch. I don't know if you could survive something like that. I've fallen from way shorter trees and been in pain for months. He, he sure is great at instilling confidence. Well then, got everything ready? Let's find a good starting point and do this. But remember it's a race, so no holding back. I want to make sure that we both give it our all. No regrets. He enters a stance that implies he's ready to begin. I had to let him know that I'm ready and assume the same stance. We make our way to the base of the Grand Tree and look up. This is the first time I realize how tall it actually is. We would really be able to make it to the top? I doubt Will's up within me, but I don't voice it. I bet I'll be the first one there. With that said, he digs his claws into the tree and starts to climb. I watch him for a few moments before replicating his actions to a T. After a few minutes of doing it, we're extremely far from the surface. Scared of heights? Make sure not to look down. I, for one, love the view. This is part of why I do it. I am terrified of heights, but... For you, Fortem. Hey, no fair! I was taking a breather! Didn't think you'd be the type to play dirty. He laughs as we scale the tree at almost the same rate. I can't imagine doing this without those claw-like tools. In fact, they make it... This seemed pretty easy. There is no risk of falling. It allows me to take a step back and admire Fortem's skill. He was climbing trees for his entire life without this kind of aid. I suddenly appreciate his every stubble and flaw, his every bruise. As we get higher and higher, we start to get enveloped in a canopy of leaves. We aren't quite high enough that they've become red, but it's still an impressive sight. It blocks us from seeing the village below us, 
but it's beautiful to look at regardless. Well, at least we have things to break our fall, even though that we just got done establishing that we can't. It really helps solidifying just where we are. We're scaling the grand tree. Nobody has done this before, and it's been his dream for decades now. However, due to his challenge, the competitive spirit starts appearing within me. You know, even though that I'm afraid of heights, I did used to try climb trees like this. When I was like a little little kid, like before I was even 10 years old, but you know. At the rate we're going, I could very well beat him to the top. In fact, if it was a race, that would be pretty much the point. But this was still his dream, and he might deserve the moment. As we near the top, what should I do? Honestly, I'm rather competitive. I mean, like, I know this is his dream, but he doesn't want me to hold him back, so... I'm not going to hold back. I mean, like, I know this is his greatest dream, but he told me not to hold back. I'll, I'll grant him that wish. I decide to fully commit to the idea of a race. Using all of my strength, I push myself as much as I can. As we get higher, we reach the blood leaves near the top. This is it, the final stretch. I use all of my effort in an attempt to defeat Fortem. And soon enough, I do. We reach the top and sit on a massive branch. Wow, I can't believe we did it! And actually, I can't believe you won! I guess you're just a natural at everything, huh? Uh, no. I mean, I don't know about my protagonist, but I can be clumsy at times. I'll admit that. I mean, after you see my art on <laughs> Twitter, uh, I get compliments on them, but they're not really that great. He smiles and inches a bit closer toward me as we sit on the branch. Look at that view. I know we can't see the village, but these leaves? I never thought I'd get to see them up close like this before. I've only ever seen them when they wilt and fall off. But being up here and seeing them fresh? Wow. I wish I could take some with me, but I know I can't. He runs his hand through some of the blood leaves, clearly in awe. You know, this doesn't feel like I thought it would. I thought it'd feel amazing, like I'd become a different person. But I feel just like I did before. I guess that's how things go, huh? Oh well, at least that's one more thing I can cross off my list. A bit anticlimactic, but I don't really know what I was expecting. Maybe it's like East Crown, just the allure of the unreachable. He looks around the area one last time, admiring the view he may never see again. Well, should we get back down to the surface? I don't want to waste much time up here. We're busy and all that. It means a lot to me that we could share this moment. I'll never forget it. With that, he starts to climb back down. I follow after him and make our way to the surface. Feels weird to be down here, after being so high up. So, what's next on the agenda? You know what? Never mind. You do you. I'll be around if you need me for any reason at all. He walks away with a big smile on his face. I guess a dream of his came true on that day. When we got to Balteus, he'd have no regrets. Valesa leads me through Mazeo, to some sort of hidden cove area. There's a large ship and it looks like some sort of dock with no signs of life. Stashes of treasure lay about, and it's apparent that this place had been abandoned. Is this really where you want to eat? Uh, after we returned, I got talking to the pirates. You know, to pick up any information on our parents. It turns out, this is their base of operations. Their HQ. Huh. So this is where they worked. We can learn a lot about them here. <sighs> kind of funny, isn't it? We both ended up having HQs in Mizeo. But to be honest, that's where I'd like the similarities to end. 
The more I learn about them, the more I hate them. They kept running off to Mizeo and left us in Sales' hands. <laughs> now that I think about it, he raised us more than they ever did. I guess they were more interested in this life of piracy. <sighs> it's awful. She looks around the cove, taking in the environment. Don't worry, Valessa. I hate my parents as well. I wanted to come here with you to face the truth. Our parents were bad people. There's no denying it. They wanted this to be their legacy, rather than us. I promise we will be better than them. She starts to walk around the area, and I follow behind her. Look, I know it's a disappointment, but they don't represent us, and we don't represent them. We don't have to be like them. Look at all this junk they valued more than us. Weapons, money, more money, and lame scrolls. Maps to some far-off treasure and riches, I'm sure. I don't know. Check them out. Picking up a handful of coins, he throws them into the nearby water. Sorry for going off like that. It just makes me really angry. We idolized them for so long, thinking the world lost good people. But to realize that maybe the world is better off without them? It's hard. Anyway, thanks for coming along with me. I just thought it would be good to do this together. I don't know how Fortin would handle it, if I'm honest. She turns to face me with a hint of a smile on her face. You know, I... realized I'm different from all of these rebels. They've been living oppressed in the shadow of the Triumvirate. But it was never the Triumvirate that held me back. It was always myself. I wanted to be a person who can make my parents proud. I wanted to do what society demanded of me. I wanted to be perfect. But this... <laughs> It was a real wake-up call. Nobody is perfect. We're all flawed at heart. Mm -hmm. To realize that and embrace it, I think that's all I needed to do. I feel like now I can be who I want, and not who other people want me to be. <laughs> it feels like such a small thing, but a different perspective can change a lot, you know? I'm gonna take a wild guess. You're in your early 20s, late teens. Yeah, I came to that sort of realization at around the same time that, you know, instead of trying to live up to the expectations of others, I think it's better to just be... I think it's just better to um, be as good of a person as you think is a good person. Like... Uh, I don't know if I'm ever going to do be a do a bad way of explaining this, but I think that instead of just doing what people expect you to do, you should just do you, do what you think is right, not what other people insist is right. I nod. Well then, uh, want to take a look around? If we can find anything to help us in Valteus then it's not a total loss. I'm sure there's something around here that we can take along with us. She starts rummaging through various crates and sacks. I do the same as her, but find nothing of note, except money. It could help after the war, but right now we needed something more. Hey, look what I found! She pulls out a pair of daggers and starts inspecting them. I think I remember these. Back when I was a kid, I swear I saw them. That means they must have belonged to my parents. Or my mother, to be exact. Just an intuition, so I can't say for sure. But I'd be willing to bet that my hunch is correct.
Did you find anything good, Monarch? I shook my head. There wasn't anything of note. Aside from those daggers, none of it was helpful. What do you say? Should I keep them? Might come in handy when we attack Belteus. Hey, a weapon is a weapon. May it be used for good or evil. Well, that was a good question, actually. She came here to move on from her parents. Taking their stuff could just be a constant reminder. On the other hand, however, maybe she could make them her own. Exactly what I'm saying. It was hard to tell whether or not this would help her, help or hinder her in the future. But with our final battle almost upon us, I'm afraid that I couldn't afford a mistake. What should I tell her? Make them my own, huh? I think I like the sound of that. In their footsteps. Well, it's not exactly in their footsteps. I mean, we're not using them to, like, perform raids on trade ships and such. We're really using them to, you know, pretty much end a dictatorship. She puts the daggers in her leather strap on her back. Returning with a smile, it seems she's ready to head home. Well, I guess now I need to focus on the important stuff. What kind of person do I want to be after this war is over? I'm no longer held back by anything, so I guess my dreams are the limit. She smiles and blushes softly. And as long as we're talking about dreams... Taking a step forward, she places her hands in mine. I smile at her and give him a soft squeeze, which she returns. I never would have dreamed that we'd become this close. We've gone through so much together and, and become so strong. You're part of the reason I was brave enough to face my past like this. But with my past taken care of, I'd like to look toward the future. And... If there's one thing I want the most, it's for you to be a part of it. You know, I keep thinking back to that dance we had. I felt so special. Ah, uh, Valessa. It's, it's a shame I'm placing you in the friend zone. There were so many eyes on us, though. I felt kind of restricted. I mean, I wanted to kiss you. That's what you're supposed to do, right? At the end of a dance... I think it's tradition or something like that. It's just that. No, Valessa, you just wanted to kiss me. Regardless of tradition, you just wanted to kiss me. Before she can finish, I step forward and slowly move my face towards hers. I stop halfway and wait for her to close the distance. Her face is bright red. When our lips touch together, it feels as if the world has stopped moving. This was our moment, just the two of us. I moved my head back, but let my hands find their way to her sides. She stammers and looks around the cove, clearly embarrassed and shy. I guess that does it then. All this time, and I only had to ask. <laughs> I'm glad to finally know how you feel, for sure. She digs a step, deep breath of relief. As if a massive weight was now gone. I totally understand. This was a big deal for her. And for me as well. Should we head back then? I guess you have other things to tend to. Uh, truth be told, I needed this. Thank you. You're welcome. With that, we're on our way out of the cove. She faced her past in that moment and came out even stronger. I have no doubt she continued to grow into an amazing woman. Before we leave for good, I turn back and look around once more. This is where our parents conducted most of their business? That means this is the closest I've been to them in decades. Goodbye.
That make leads me to the town square of Mazeo. Because of our recent conversations, I know what's going on. He's taking me to the stop where he lost his mother during the occupation. It must be hard on him. I can see him shaking as we walk through the town. But if seeing this painful memory helped him move on, it was my duty to assist him. In the coming storm, he needed to be resolute. Helping him would help all of us. I can't thank you enough for coming with me, Monarch. There's not many people I trust this much. I'm really glad I have you. Until today, I've only had dreams about doing this. But now, I'm strong enough. And honestly, it's all because of you. I give a little credit to my near-death experience, but not all of it. You've grown into a capable leader and led us all down the right path. He smiles, and I smile back at him. It was nice to receive some support after all we've been through. Being the monarch wasn't very easy, but it's a weight I had to carry. We walk through the town square, like taking back alleys for occasional shortcuts. After a while, we end up in the large open area. I'm surprised they haven't built shops here. This is where town meetings are held. They don't happen very often, but they need a big open space. There's a lot of people in Museo, so everyone deserves a chance to attend. Soon after that, however, his storm becomes more serious. A lot of bodies in one place. That's just what they needed during the occupation. This is where it happened, Monarch. Uh, the stuff with my mother. I nodded him as we take steps closer to the center. You may notice a crimson tint on the ground here. This is where they piled the bodies during the attack. So much blood. So much carnage. Permanently stained. Just like the memories in my head. As hard as I try, I can't just scrub those off either. Every other night, I wake up in a cold sweat. Crying. The memories will always be with you, Dominic. And they'll hurt. But... A wound can't heal. There will always be scars, but a wound can't heal. I feel the lingering touch of her hand against mine. Then, the moment she goes away, it makes me feel empty inside. There's nothing left to feel, except all those corpses pressed against me. A warmth that slowly dissipates, leaving me cold and alone. I had to stay under them until things died down. Almost a whole day. The moment I could, I got out and took her pendant along with me. It's all I have to remember her by, but perhaps that's why I can't let it go. How can you move on from something when you remind yourself of it every day? Just the thought, of course. But after all I've been through, at least it's a thought with merit. Well, I don't think you should completely forget about your mother. I mean, I want you to move on, and I want to help you move on, but I don't think that you should forget about the woman who loved you and raised you. He holds up his hand and shows me the pendant he's holding. I've seen that a few times now. He seems to carry it with him everywhere. Of course, as he suggested... That also means he carries the memory along as well. Let's keep moving. I'll show you exactly where it happened. Just stay close to me, okay? This is hard. I nod, and I start to follow him as we venture deeper into the open area. A podium rests at the center, likely where they'd hold these meetings from. Soon, I picture what this place would look like during the occupation. I cringe. After a while, Dominic stops dead in his tracks and looks down at the ground. His body language and reaction tells me this is exactly where his trauma happened. I position myself right beside him and wait for him to speak. I couldn't rush him now. Well, this is it. 
He clutches the pendant close to his chest. Would you sit with me, Monarch? We might be here for a while after all. He sits down on the ground, attracting stares from a few passers-by. I join him, caring more for his well-being than the judgment of those around us. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you, because that's what you're supposed to do. Looking down at the ground, he places the pendant down. He moves this around slightly. It was right here, I think. You never really forget, you know. I hope it's not weird to sit here with me. Don't worry about it. I shake my head and let him do what he needs to do. Coming here to face what happened. I needed to do this. But now I'm not sure what to do next. I mean, with the pendant. Do I leave it behind? Just like my memories, or do I hold on? That was a good question, and I can tell it's bothering him. I'm sure someone will just come around and steal it anyway. But maybe that's for the best. It can be somebody else's burden. I think I've grown tired of carrying it around for my entire life. You'll get rid of the pendant, but you're not going to get rid of the memories. I... Dominic, I know that the memories pains you. I know they really do. And, and I want you to move on, but... Bad memories is just part of us. You know? That's why I don't think you should... Get rid of the pendant. However, I also don't want to regret doing this. I could be acting rashly in the face of our final battle. It wouldn't be the first time somebody has done that, you know. I nod and let him speak. Look at me. The world is at stake and I'm worried about this. You know what? With everything you've done for us, I trust you. What do you think I should do, Monarch? Take it, or leave it? Like, I know that the world is at stake, but you... But to protect the world, you need closure on this. Besides, I'm a bit biased here in almost every regard. Your head is more clear than mine, so it's worth a shot. What do you think I should do here? What's the right choice? On her memory and her life. You're probably right. And I don't want to make a mistake. Perhaps just coming here after all those years was enough. You have no idea how much this means to me, Monarch. Take things step by step. The more you poke at a wound, the less it hurts. Takes the pendant up from off the ground and clutches it in his hand. We both stand up and turn back in the direction we came from. Well then, should we get going? I nod and we start to wipe back the way we came. But Dominic looks much happier and content than he did earlier. Perhaps the events of today would give him a clear mind in the future. Our final battle was imminent. We would find out sooner rather than later. Really? Really, I see a check mark, but I'm Valesa, but I guess. Oh, because I remember I saw a message saying that I've gained her loyalty by doing that. Okay, I guess that... <laughs> I guess that's because I made the right choice in her path. But I guess I didn't in Damaga Fortem? Really? Because, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, I I swear I've done everything right. But then again, 
You know what? If the cre I don't understand this, but if the if this is meant to say that the creator disagrees with what I have to say, so be it. What about you, Sophie? You're not ready to earn Sophie's loyalty. Oh boy, well, I'm not visiting those previous areas, so let's hope that he's loyal enough. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm... You cannot access this scene. Well, it's not like I can... Okay, so it's not like I can go back and, um... You have not earned Dominic's loyalty. You have not earned Fortem's loyalty, but I have earned Valesa. Why did I earn Valesa's but not Fortem's and Dominic's? Is it all based on the choices that we've made? If so, that's a shame because... I freaking love Dominic. I mean, like, I like Valesa, but as a friend, not as a romantic partner, but the game seems to be really pushing that. Oh well. Oh well. I'm not changing my mind. I guess next time, um... Nice world map theme. I think that I've done everything that I wanted to do. You can- you guys can go- are free to tell me, um... Since I assume that Balteus is a point of no return. You guys are free to tell me, um... What's up with those, um... With the whole loyalty scenes and all that. Explain to me why I got Valesa, but not for Tam or Domix. I assume it was- I assume it has something to do with the final choice that I made. Regardless, I hope you liked this part. If you did, hit that like button. Again, leave behind a comment, tell me- Tell me whatever, because you guys probably know this game more than I do. Unless you're watching a blind playthrough of a game you've never played either. <laughs> Alright, and if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button, and remember to hit that bell next time. We'll go to Balteus. See you guys next time.